Hi guys, I'm Nicole Fig. Welcome back to my channel. For a while now, I've been wanting to reshoot some of my old boron basic videos that I uploaded a couple of years ago. Specifically, how to hold your boron, how to hold your tipper, and tonal backhand. And the reason is that I put a lot of information into maybe one or two videos, and I just wanted to make three separate videos and just add a lot more detail to hopefully help answer some of the questions that you guys um, have been asking me. Um, and the information that I want to share with you, the tips and tricks, are tips that I learn from mentors, friends, but overall it's pretty much my own experience of what has worked for me and has worked for some of my students. Um, and this may not work for you or you may find a better way of doing them that suits you best, but hopefully it can give you a little bit of guidance. Um, maybe you can take some inspiration from them and change them a little bit just to suit uh, whatever it is more comfortable for you so that you can feel more confident and have more control of the instrument. This video is on how to hold your tipper. So this tipper right here is one of my all-time favorite tippers ever. I just love it so much. It's so comfy, it's so powerful. I really, 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 really love it. And um, I've actually made a video on the tippers that I have um, made by Stevie Moises. I will link that below so you can check it out and you can hear them a little bit better. He is an amazing tipper making, an amazing tipper maker. I love his tippers and cannot praise him enough for the tippers that he makes. Absolutely amazing. Um, I do have a couple more. I'm not going to go into detail of all of them because I want to kind of concentrate more on how to hold it instead of like my uh, the actual tipper collection. But if you want a video on my uh, what's in my tipper bag, I can do that for you. Comment down below. But some of the ones I just wanted to kind of point out some of the tippers that are out there. So you have tippers like this, which are completely solid, um, just made of wood. You have different thicknesses. For example, you can have something like this that you have like two ends and they just, you know, these are really good, especially if you're starting, starting out. Uh, this one doesn't weigh that much, so that also depends the weight, uh, the balance of the tipper. You have things like this that are like more hot rods, um, but the ones that I kind of prefer to play are the thicker ones. And the reason is because otherwise I get a lot of muscle pain and muscle spasms if they're very thin. I will get into that a little bit more in the video, but basically the ones that I love to play with are that are a little bit more hot roddy. This one has both, uh, so solid and hot rod. If you're starting, I would recommend something like this. This is perfect for starting out. It's just powerful and it makes triplets and upstrokes a lot easier. So, little advice, this is the best. Um, okay, so let's get on with the video. For this video, I will be using these two tippers. I will be using this one for the more traditional hold and I will be using this one for the way I hold the video. First, let's start with the traditional hold. So before tippers were a thing, people used to play with their hands and they used to play kind of with the, with the knuckle of the finger and it would be a lot of open sounds. Straight away you can see that my wrist is pointing out. It's pretty much all the way that it can go. It's very, you know, it's sticking out and you kind of need that if you're going to be playing with your hand, you know? I'm not the best hand player, by the way. Not at all. You can look at other players that are absolutely fantastic and they can do triplets and they can do all these things with their hands. Absolutely incredible. But just to give you an idea of the wrist, okay? So now, when they started holding tippers, the more traditional way or the way that I was taught that was the most traditional way was to have the wrist really pointing out just as if you would if you were playing without a tipper. Um, I will show you this way, but to me I had to tweak it a little bit and not have it so pointed out because it would give me a lot of pain. So I would kind of have to do it more this way. It wasn't completely straight as, you know, it's not completely straight out the traditional way, but it's not completely out, so it's kind of like a happy medium between this and that, so it's something like this, okay? What you want to do is hold the tipper, you want to hold it like a pen, and I know that some people might put two fingers on the top like this to hold the pen, I would suggest just the one, the one finger and the other one is supporting at the base, okay? 
what you want to do, hold it like a pen. If, if it's too high up, it will be very difficult to do triplets. Okay, if it's too far down, it might be easier in a way, but it might get in your way and then it's also longer and you're kind of distributing the weight in a very kind of awkward place. But then again, if this is what works for you, go ahead, okay? So I usually hold it somewhere around there, I'm not completely in the middle, just slightly above the middle point. So there. This one actually has a little, like, it has like little um, grooves where you can put your fingers. Some people like that, some people don't. Find what works for you, okay? So you hold it like a pen, then you're gonna put that, like where the ink would come out of, towards your belly button, okay? Now, this is where you would wanna kind of figure out how much wrist do I need, do I need it? Is that comfortable for me? Is it straighter, more comfortable for me? You kind of have to figure it out. What you want to do there, if you've never played it before, you kind of want to put it towards your chin, okay? And what you want to do is you want to hit the skin, but you want to kind of hit it um, kind of intensely inwards, if that makes sense. So you kind of want to go here and in and out. So it's kind of like if you were doing a C. And then you want to just go back and retrace your steps. So you're doing a backward C, but if you notice, I'm not doing because that gives you like a shik shik sound. You see? It's not up and down like this, it's more in and out. At first, you might want to do like big motions like this. You don't need that. You do, that. That will be too much work. So eventually, you will do this. But the way you're approaching hitting the drum is still going inwards. If you can see my wrist, for me, because I'm so used to playing it my way, I'm not the best at playing it in the traditional way and my wrist does want to go completely flat. But that is part of kind of figuring out what works for you and what feels more comfortable and that you have control of the tipper. So literally that's all you want to do at first. What you want to avoid is having You see, the downbeat is very powerful and the upbeat is not as powerful as a downbeat. Some people, I found that they either have a very strong downstroke or a very strong upstroke. But there's usually always one that is weaker than the other one and that's completely normal. So you want to work on those upstrokes if that's the case or the downstrokes if that's the case. If it's the downstrokes, just go down. The upstrokes and the reason is that it's more natural for you to do this than for you to do this in in everyday in everyday life and you kind of want them to sound pretty equal and here you can kind of if you're completely starting one of like the most fun things that you could do then is like play with dynamics so So if you notice, I'm literally just emphasizing certain downbeats like harder than others, and I'm um, and I'm also going quiet and loud. Then you can do the same with the upstrokes being there as well. So you can do. You see? Now you can mix them up. So you can come up with. that I recommend for my students who are only starting because you can really be creative and you can have fun and it just kind of gives you a lot of muscle memory and strength in your in your hands but that's also it's fun than just doing this 
the whole time, you know? So it can kind of give some of those creative flows and rhythms that you have and it will really help out. So I hope you enjoy that little, that little groove. One of the things I think that beginners struggle with is not making the whoosh, whoosh sound. That is kind of, that kind of sound. And I want to say, first of all, it's completely normal and I know when you keep making those like those sounds it's just so frustrating because you can't figure out why you're making them and it just ugh, it's annoying and you kind of sometimes i used to kind of lose my patience and just not understand what was happening or why it was making that sound because no matter what it did it continued to make the sound but i found out that a lot of it has to do with the angle that you that you have in your tipper so if you're completely doing it uh, parallel to the skin Try it, it's easier to make that sound. You see, if you have it completely out like this, it's very easy to make that sound. Very easy. You see? Okay, and it's also the way you're attacking the skin or the way you're hitting the skin. So remember at first I said it's kind of like an inward motion. If you do an inward motion rather than a brush that motion, it's going to take away a little look. Can you hear it? Now if I go in, they're not there anymore. Also, if you're here, or if you're here, it's going to make it very, very hard. So you want to try to find that kind of middle ground where you can hit inward. and not have the hushu sound and be really patient remember that when you when it comes to holding the drum or holding the tipper very small adjustment will make a huge difference so what i suggest is that when you are getting that hushu sound stop exactly where you are freeze and look at your hand really pay attention to the angle that you have how you're holding it where how is my angle then then try to analyze it and fix it so here i'm going to say i'm going to do it this way and i'm going to hit more inward oh that worked and now look at your hands and observe and feel how you're hitting the skin and if it works then kind of make like a like a mental note that that's where you want to go so the next time if you if you find yourself here again you can say oh i know i know that this worked better for me the last time. So try doing that and know as well that some days will be better than others. Some days you will just have like a hush day, a hush day, a, a shush day. No matter what you do, you just get them out and it's very frustrating, I know. But be patient, keep at it and just keep calm and try to observe what you're doing so that you can make small adjustments. I know that small adjustments can go a long way. Um, yeah. And also, if that keeps happening, look at how you're holding the drum. Maybe you have a different angle that it's making it easier for you to have those sounds. So just observe the overall technique that you have. Okay, so for the way I hold my tipper, I started playing it the other way. And even now, I can already feel it just from that small video. I started getting a lot of, like I mentioned, wrist pains, but also like blisters and stuff. Like I, I, I can already see kind of like a dent, and that wasn't really working for me because I used to play in sessions for hours and hours and hours, and I had to put band aids and band aids, and then you know I would, if I forget, then it would bleed, and it was just, I just didn't really enjoy playing that way. So what I did was to try to find, and this is kind of what I always say, try to find the most comfortable position for you, the most natural way that your body naturally sits, because that will be the less likely that you will have injuries. So for me, it was, if I just put my hands down, or if I'm walking in the park or whatever, how is my hand naturally falling? And to me, it's this. So it will be like that. That's my natural shape, right, of my hand falling. So what I did is that I just put the tipper in my hands and that's how I do it. Now, I know some people have mentioned that maybe it's a baby grip or something 
I, I don't know. Um, I kind of just figure out on my own. And I know that the, sometimes the baby group, they can kind of hold it more like so, I think. I'm not too sure. I don't actually use all the fingers to hold onto the tipper. Um, it's kind of like when I have my hand like this, I put the tipper, the most important two are here. This is kind of like the, the pressure point of where I hold it. So I put it here and then it goes on a diagonal, like following the shape of my knuckles. So it's kind of like, like this, okay? So as I mentioned, this is where I hold it and I'm not actually wrapping my finger around it like this either. I'm, it's putting the pressure from here and just kind of against my inner finger like that okay so it's kind of just like this mm -hmm. now the, the fingers what they do instead of gripping it they they're there almost for the bounce so it's they kind of act like a mattress okay but also they give it that extra power that it needs so it acts like a mattress and power okay so then what you see is that my hands kind of they're kind of doing like that and they're dangling my wrist is completely straight and my power rather than it coming just from my hand it kind of comes from my forearm it's not really coming from up here either though it's kind of it, it, it if and if it is is not i don't need to make a huge movement for me to get that sound um the the a lot of the strength also comes from the fingers like i mentioned and the forearm so if i do a downbeat I'm almost like wrapping it, it's like, it's my mattress, because I want it snappy, it's my mattress. If I want power, then they give me that extra oomph, so mattress and power. And then you can also, I can also let it bounce. So there, it's a lot more relaxed fingers are a lot more relaxed and they're kind of just acting like a little bouncy, like a bouncy castle. I'm more comfortable playing this way than with a traditional and that's okay what it's made out of the length of it um, where the weight is balanced how much it weights all of those things are gonna impact how you're holding how you're playing for example when I use something like this that it's very very small compared it's um it's not as thick as the, the one that I normally use this kind of gives me a lot of pain. Um, it's a great tipper, I love it, I absolutely love it, but I can't play with it more than like maybe a couple of sets. I, I wouldn't be able to play for two or three hours non-stop with it. And the reason is that because it's so small and the way I hold my tipper is that when I do this, here it gives me a lot of strain because my thumb and my hand has to work a lot harder to keep it secure. I can play it, harder to maintain the strength there and I kind of have to use the thumb a little bit more than I would if it's thicker. This size is the perfect for me. With this I can play a couple of hours in sessions and I'll be okay, I can keep playing, but this one I kind of have to really know what I want it to use for. There's a lot of things to consider. Um, some of the kind of more beginner ones I believe have like weights in them or like the ones that you can find like in just like a normal shop have weights. Um, sometimes to me, it can make me really tired because I have a lot of extra weight. So I like something that's a little bit more lightweight. Um, it also depends the balance on it. I think this one has, it's because of the materials, it weighs a little bit more on this side, but that's how I like it. Um, some are completely leveled when it comes to weight. Um, also, you, what you do want to be careful of though, 
is at the end of the hot rods, make sure that they're not pointy or that like you can, if, if you're going to do this to, to, to your own skin for a little bit, like you will be okay. If it hurts you, it's most likely going to hurt your skin as well. Uh, Stevie makes an amazing, amazing job at just making sure that you don't have any of that. I mean, it doesn't hurt at all. As with the drum, you know, I know people that have really long sticks and very thin and they love that or I have, I know some people that love having like the little weights in there or have the weight be on one side or the other more so or that they're very small tippers. It just depends on what makes you comfortable and what makes you feel like you have more control of your, of your grooves and your strokes. If the tipper that you're using, you've tried for a long time to make it work and it doesn't really fit right or it gives you a lot of pains or you can't really play for a long time or you feel it's too heavy or you might consider changing to a different tipper um, that could maybe help you a little bit more. If you're really um, comfortable and confident with your plane and with your strokes, it doesn't really matter. Anybody could give me a tipper and I could probably make it work and I can adjust to the the grip if it's uh, heavy, if it's um, uh, depending on the material that it's made of, the weight, the balance, all of that, the thickness, I can make it work and play. I might not be able to play for a long time, but I would be able to play. So same thing like if you're a complete beginner or you're having trouble kind of finding the control of your drum that I was saying not to have a chair with uh, armrest, is the same with the tippers. I know it's really exciting to have a lot of tippers because they all make different sounds and it's just a lot of fun to experiment with the sounds and things like that but you could do that definitely um, when you're kind of being creative and just kind of wanting to explore the different sounds of what you like or what you don't like or there's definitely a place and a time for that but I would suggest that if you're kind of practicing your triplet or something a little bit more technical that you kind of stick with one or two tippers only and the reason is that if you have 20 different tippers, your brain doesn't really allow you to have, because you're changing so often, it doesn't, you're not allowing your brain to have um, muscle memory and to be like, okay, this is, oh, this feels good. Once you have that muscle memory and you know what you're doing, then you can adjust and remember how you need to adjust to all your tippers. But if you're gonna be precise, at first, you kind of need to stick with one or two maximum. And honestly, in the long run, it's just gonna make it easier and faster for you to feel comfortable playing and holding a tipper. I think that's that's it for this video, really. Um, just know that um, little adjustments go a really long way. Uh, to be patient with yourself. And I know it takes a little bit of time to find that tipper that you're like, oof. I love this tipper, it's my favorite. It takes a little bit of time and it does take a little bit of trying different uh, brands or different tippers. Be patient with yourself and know that maybe you have one that right now you're like, oh, this is really good, it feels really comfortable. And then as more as you, uh, as you play, you might get your hands on a different tipper and be like, whoa, this feels way better than the other one that I had before. And that's natural, that's part of growing and changing and you know, kind of moving to more professional um, tools, if that makes sense. So with whatever it is that you have, um, try to make little adjustments and I hope this helped. Know that this is not just the right, the one way to do it. There's many different ways of holding it. Uh, people hold it with their fingers like this. People hold it kind of with the traditional, but like holding onto it more. They use their thumb to play. There's so many different variants of how to hold the tipper, but this is just mine. And I hope it helped. Um, so that's it. Thank you guys. Bye.